So in this video I'll demonstrate some of the functionality associated with the uh, Parks uh, SIGGEN. Uh, first thing to note is the limitations associated with the frequencies. With clock 0 and clock 2 you are limited to go between 8 kilohertz and 110 megahertz. That's a limitation of hard-coded because both of these uh, clocks on the SI5351 have to share the same PLL and therefore I had to choose a frequency range where they can uh, I can configure one PLL frequency and then I can uh, um, configure dividers to get uh, um, uh, frequencies between the two and uh, from 8 kilohertz to 110 megahertz uh, that can be done. Frequency uh, or clock 1 that can run anywhere from uh, 1800 hertz all the way up to 200 megahertz and uh, that is uh, using a dedicated PLL and therefore I can go to the maximum extremes of the SI5351. So right here I have got all three clock uh, outputs enabled. First one is at uh, clock 0 is 8 kilohertz, clock 1 is 1800 hertz and clock 2 is 110 megahertz. So right now my scope probe is connected to clock 0 and if I come to clock 0 and I look at the frequency coming out you can see it's uh, 8 kilohertz. I've changed the uh, scope probe now to clock 1 of the SI5351 and there's the output there and there's a little bit of rigging and if you look it's uh, 1.8 kilohertz. The scope probe now is connected to clock 2 and if I come here and I look at uh, clock 2 see it's putting out 110 megahertz here. My counter is showing it's 110 megahertz and I'm not seeing a square wave I'm seeing more of a sinish wave and that has to do with the bandwidth of my scope it's only 250 megahertz and uh, the or 200 megahertz it's a 200 megahertz uh, scope so all the harmonics above 200 megahertz are being attenuated so you're not seeing a very square wave-ish it's not very square wave-ish I've now configured clock 0 and clock 2 to be swapped so clock 0 was running at 8 kilohertz now it's running at 110 megahertz and clock 2 which was running at 110 megahertz is now running at 8 kilohertz and uh, clock 1 is still running at uh, is now running at uh, 200 megahertz and before it was running at uh, 1.8 kilohertz my probe is now connected to uh, clock 3 or, or clock 2 or the third clock and let's take a look at that signal there's some ringing we're seeing so you can see clock 3 is at 8 kilohertz. My scope probe is now connected to clock 1. And so if we take a look at clock 1. You'll see clock 1 is running at 200 megahertz. My uh, scope probe is now connected to clock 0. And here's the output from clock 0 as you can see it's putting out 110 megahertz and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to change the frequency and I've got it set to change the frequency by uh, 10 megahertz so I've just changed the frequency there now and on the dial it's showing uh, 100 megahertz and here it's showing 100 megahertz so I'm just going to go ahead and just keep changing it. There it's showing 90. Should be showing 90 megahertz there. And as I continue to change it, you'll notice the actual amplitude is changing. The amplitude of the waveform is changing as I decrease the frequency there it's showing it's uh, 30 megahertz 
and on my dial it's showing 30 megahertz. And you can see I'm starting to get a little bit more square wave-ish because I'm seeing more harmonics at 30 megahertz on my scope, on my 200 megahertz scope. And I'll continue going down. There's it as 20. There it is at 10. And we're seeing some ringing here on the edges, on the sharp edges. And there's 10 megahertz. And I'm down to the minimum now, which is 8 kilohertz. I've got the SigGen configured for IQ mode, so clock 0 and clock 2 are outputting the same frequency but uh, the clocks are in quadrature, that is they're 90 degrees out of phase scope, uh, my scope probes are connected to clock 0, clock 2 and here's the output the yellow trace is clock 0 and the purple trace is clock 2 and you can see there's a fair bit of ringing and that's just because of my scope probes and I'm also getting some coupling between the probes because they're so close together and you can see in fact that the frequencies are 3.3 megahertz and here I'm changing the frequencies so right now I'm up to 51 megahertz 53 megahertz and uh, there you can see the signals are out of phase as you get higher in frequency the phase difference is, uh, is not quite uh, quadrature, it's a little bit less, but I think here it is an action quadrature because the peak is here and the peak is here, which is roughly halfway between the peak and the trough of that first wave. 